Good morning. So good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sundar Venugopal. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how APIs are driving uh, city digitization. So let's go with the agenda. So before I go with the agenda, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, so how many of you are uh, on in the networking and cloud com com cloud competing domain? So one here. And uh, how many of you are working on IoT? Sensors, multi-sensor gateways, applications? Anybody here? OK. Um, how many would like to know about the IoT smart city applications? Right. So, uh, so I keep my agenda to that audience, OK? Uh, 30 minutes is not going to be too much uh, uh, you know, enough for us. So what is smart connected communities? Uh, if you look at the smart connected communities, basically there are uh, current technologies that is in the networking domain, which most of you are aware of. Um, but what is important is the, the underlying technologies, that is the underlay and the overlay technologies. So if you look at the, uh, the center one here, uh, that's pretty much most of us are used to in the networking domain. Uh, but the underlay and the overlay technologies are the components as part of the IoT. So if you look at the uh, underlay, uh, we have uh, various levels of uh, field resources, uh, basically uh, the sensors and gateways. So I'll be drilling down into the sensors and gateways as we move on. And then the city infrastructure management. So basically, this is kind of uh, uh, capabilities which runs on the northbound. And so you can, I'll be referring the northbound as SIM, and then the southbound as the, the sensors and gateways. So before I get into the details, um, what is a smart city? Uh, what is digitization, right? This is a question that you might have. Um, if you look at it, um, uh, with all the technologies, with all the cool technologies and the systems in place, um, you know, you would love to have this uh, into the real world scenario. Uh, but the digitization is basically something that is relevant to the citizens, something that can provide a solution. So how can you be relevant? So that's the question of the day, right? The relevance comes from uh, all the different data that has been triggered with the sensors, with the different um, enablers, which you can look at. So each one of you are carrying now a supercomputer in your pockets, right? All your uh, mobile phones can do a lot of capabilities that can actually uh, provide as a sensor data into the system. So keep that as the one of the sensors. And then we will get into the smart city sensors, uh, which can talk about uh, the lighting, traffic, and parking applications, and the citizens' engagement. So what's the challenge here? Basically, we need to have the underlay technologies for the API developers to basically be seamless. Right? You don't need to worry about how the sensors are interconnected, what data flow through those sensors. So that's pretty much the challenge. Uh, so that's something that will be enabled with the API. How do you really sync data? How do you really deliver the content? So if you look at it, you know we have various methods to do the sync data and deliver content. Uh, I'll get into the device engine functionality of this. And then the connecting the apps and the things. right? So that's coming from the citizen themselves. So if there's a strong citizen's engagement on the, the smart city infrastructure, we will make this technology relevant to the citizens. So 
So this is something that uh, you all know, right? You might have this question back to me. We have seen all these uh, uh, traditional issues that has been addressed, right? But what is that that is making it unique? These are all the fragmented uh, solutions that is offered right now. And the smart city uh, communities is basically uh, is going to address this in a consolidated way. It's going to give you a contextual, uh, a very uh, composite levels of relationship. And those relationships can be actually part of the APIs that we can offer to the citizens. So just bear with me, the clicker is not working, so I need to keep walking. So if you look at it, um, uh, today I'm going to focus more on the, uh, uh, the uh, transportation, that is the smart parking and uh, smart traffic. Uh, we'll also talk about some of the citizen engagement. So this is just a depiction of how uh, we can improve the effectiveness uh, and the productivity and provide the cost-effective uh, citizen services. So city digitization enables technology innovation. So that's something that I'm going to do for the citizens, uh, for the cities, and the business. So I'm going to switch gears here. Now I'm getting into the details of the sensors, details of uh, what really makes uh, the, the sensor data very valid for the citizens. So um, this is a. Uh, a reference from the IC Insights. If you look at the last uh, seven years or 10 years uh, map, uh, sensors on the market has gone up to like 10 billion. And the, uh, uh, the units shipped almost twice. So if you look at it, uh, this is a uh, upscale tra trajectory that goes up. So what is this uh, giving you is that um, each of the sensors in the market is going to give you enough of information uh, that you want to compose. And I'm going to come to you to compute to say how much of these sensor data is going to create the levels of APIs that you'll be working on. And these levels of APIs, if you look at it, um, that's going to give you the, the composite nature of would it be possible at all for you to, uh, to decouple a few of the sensor data. So um, sensors can be um, you know, wireless or it can be wired. Uh, there are different types of uh, city sensors. Um, uh, they can be uh, basically uh, giving you data points for uh, like thermal, uh, hydrometric, uh, anemometric, uh, any amount of gas, uh, CO2, uh, NO2, uh, light sensors. Uh, the wired ones uh, can be. Uh, uh, anything to do with uh, payment, you know, pressure points. Uh, it also can be something for pedestrians, uh, detection. Uh, there are magnetic sensors. Uh, there are opto-magnetic couplers. Uh, but what it means to you is um, the sensor data is abstracted. There is an abstraction model that can provide you. And there is an abstraction API that is given to the next layer. Uh, these uh, data from the sensors basically gives you all the semantics that you want to abstract. And then uh, you can go into the standards to see you know, how do you really want to uh, get the uh, sensor standardization. Similarly, as you go up in the next level, uh, the data flow that enables across the city between the things, space, and the people, the device model basically gives you uh, how a machine level abstractions can go upstream into the device engine. And again, we have some standards to uh, look at it. So what it really means for you is um, um, the users and uh, app developers, right? Uh, you know, it is, it is a tough IT going with the exponential levels of uh, automation, uh, ex you know, programmability, and uh, you need to have the, uh, the lightweight development uh, environment. 
So if you look at any of the sensors, these uh, sensors give you a, a very low packet, a small packet with a high density traffic. So they're going to send you a constant rate of information back and forth, but these packet sizes can be very small. The sensors can be uh, infinitely uh, uh, low consuming power uh, that can be like in uh, milliwatts or picowatts. Uh, they can last without even, um, without any battery change for five to 10 years. So considering that, it's going to give you a very small packet size of information back to the uh, uh, device engine. So with all the things um, uh, connected together, I think we are walking into uh, a mode where most of the uh, data points are actually surrounded us within us. And uh, there'll be uh, multiples of APIs that uh, we would be transforming it that can actually be consumed by the citizens. So what, again, this means to you is uh, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we, in the sense, the smart city infrastructure would provide you only the contextual APIs the citizen engagement. Think about it this way. If I give you only two APIs to you, which is contextual, and then the citizen's experience, uh, would you be able to develop apps on top of it? So that's a big question, right? So how are we going to do it? So there are various tools and methods. Uh, one of the methods are, um, um, so we have a good um, you know, uh, time to first hello world. So when you have a time, you can go around the labs, uh, the DevNet zone. Uh, we can show you that, you know, how to uh, quickly get on to this. Uh, it is based on uh, um, a things query language, which is basically an IoT language that we are coming up with. So all you, uh, these are on RESTful services, so you can pretty much get started on writing a, a thing query in less than an hour. You know, that's, that's the speed at which you can uh, develop an, an app for an IoT. Okay? Um, we have a dashboard, so you can look at the dashboard that is, again, much more interactive, that can give you all the state information. Um, it also provides you mobility, so you can develop the, uh, the you can put these apps on your uh, mobile phones, and also it's available because it's all inter-cloud, and uh, it can be any, any zone and any domain. So what has, what has this given to you is, uh, we have completely decoupled all the device logics, uh, you know, pretty much, and provided you a business logic. So it's up to the business logic to actually go forward, get the citizen's experience, convert them into applications. And that's what the uh, real smart city is all about. So this is a little busy slide. I just want to point only a few, a uh, couple of points here. Uh, what's the scale at which uh, your APIs are going to go? Is uh, if you look at the two blue uh, blocks, uh, you know there are API providers, there are API consumers, and what this uh, topic is basically is like how you can develop uh, various levels of APIs and uh, how the models are divided. In. So if you look at it, uh, just take a couple of you know use cases. Uh, I'm going to write a parking and a lighting traffic uh, API. Um, I drive into a, a parking lot. I don't want uh, the, all the lights to be uh, on all the time. So based on where I'm used to park, I need those lights to turn on. That's a, a typical application, if you think about it. Um, so if you write that API, there are only two APIs. It has like two to four properties and then it has only one to three relationship, and then there are only one to three actions. You turn it on, you turn it off, or you probably put it into a 10% mode or a 20% mode. But if you actually do this query, you are going to get about 31,104 levels of uh, equivalent responses from all these sensors. So that's the scale at which we are looking at, right? So we want to really have this logical stack built in in a very, uh, uh, concise and also uh, into a, uh, into a model-driven uh, process. So what we've done is um, I can get into the facets and uh, the models, uh, how the device logic and the domain logics are, can be split. Uh, but basically, uh, if you look at the device logic and the domain logic, um, these two basically abstracts most of the information to you. And these APIs are, again, uh, provided on the cloud as a RESTful services. So at, at that point, I can leave. I can if any questions, we can come back to that. Okay. So
so what is that you're getting uh, from the uh, uh, from the smart city uh, communities basically we have um, uh, validated a lot of sensors uh, we have validated a lot of uh, urban services and uh, the api runtime and then also the version and policies so what you have is a complete uh, certified uh, set of uh, uh, staging processes uh, so if you're going to build certain apis uh, you're going to actually uh, have most of the certifications and the policies and the certified uh, uh, runtime apis can be provided to you So uh, is my API providing solutions for mobile apps? You know, this is a question you might have. Uh, our goal is to provide even much more than this. Uh, we want to provide IOE apps, okay? What is an IOE app? It's uh, the mobility plus the ability to have all the sensor data provide some, some of the very key information for the citizens. So I'll get onto the use cases right away, uh, and then I can provide you some of the uh, quick um, ways of how you can develop the APIs. So um, take a use case here, right? So I'm just trying to link data of the city services. Uh, there are uh, pollution uh, data that is coming from, uh, which is called as sensor data. And then I have uh, open data from the city. Uh, so I've been um, working with some of the uh, IOE cities in, like in Kansas City and also in, uh, in Barcelona. What we have is there are uh, city services that is providing open data, which you can actually consume it. So uh, it can give you all the 311 services and also all the uh, public works, pet counts, all this. Uh, you have people data, which is basically coming from all of you. Okay, You can actually become a source of sensor. And then we have the standard data that is uh, every light pole uh, moving forward can become a, a sensor. right? It can actually give you. Uh, various informations from uh, managing the, the light in the intensity to the uh, citizen services like providing you video feed. So um, what, what is the kind of use cases you can think about, right? Um, a, a parking, uh, a, a sensor in a, in a, in a um, uh, say, which can work on security, a camera, a security camera, you would see it in everywhere, right? Can it actually provide you information for uh, measuring the density of the people around you? Right, that's something that you can think of. Um, you can actually get the uh, pet counts from uh, the city information. Right, so think about it. All these uh, use cases. Uh, I have listed down uh, some of the uh, use cases. So basically, what we provide is a city data schema. Uh, should it be structured or unstructured? Right. So what would be your answer? So it's both, OK? So what we have is uh, we have both uh, structured and unstructured data. Uh, I can talk about the database and all the uh, modeling that we have. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, you do not need to worry about uh, whether the data need to be structured or unstructured, but we provide you all the capabilities for the city modeling. Uh, this is another example where um, um, this is coming in from the uh, KCMO.org, uh, which is the Kansas City, uh, Missouri. They actually provide you uh, a pet count over 100 in a particular area. So what is this giving you? These are virtual sensor data, basically coming from the citizens. And uh, it, it's, it puts it on the map, saying that what is the density of the people moving between each places, right? So what you can actually develop here is uh, what is the traffic levels that you can manage? Uh, you can distribute the traffic uh, based on where you're driving into the city or driving out of the city. Uh, it can actually create more apps, which can give you real-time information of, uh, uh, it can detect uh, various uh, uh, activities that are happening around the city. Right? Um, I can give you a lot of use cases here. Uh, a, a parking a light uh, can actually provide you uh, information to direct you to a particular place. Uh, think about it when uh, the city lights go off, or uh, maybe if there is a maintenance needed, the sensors can provide you maintenance. If the cameras themselves actually are failing, uh, we provide the uh, uh, data information back whether the cameras are failed. Um, any 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 uh, uh, traffic lights can now become 
uh, information back to the city services like uh, it can detect a license plate of a vehicle because of the video uh, metadata that we can forward. So think about it that um, you don't need uh, the cops to really chase the car, but they can actually have all the traffic, uh, uh, the city lights uh, tracking down each of the vehicles based on the license plates, right? So you can write various apps on top of it, basically, to actually do all these functions. Uh, this is another way of a um, uh, few other examples. Um, one thing that really uh, um, we deployed is the uh, bike trails. So uh, we have uh, deployed bike trails where uh, if you are a, a bike lover, you, you have your own trails. So you carry your device, and then basically it provides a new trails. You can actually push it back to as an API, and then this becomes a bike trail where you can create a community. So these bike trails can actually provide you the city information in terms of you know if you want to create your own voluntary services. Um, you're going into a restaurant on a day, you want to find uh, which are the cool restaurants out there that can provide you various levels of uh, uh, options and discounts. Uh, we can actually provide this through the uh, citizens' engagement uh, that can actually feed in all this data back. Um, uh, there is another cool data where uh, if you walk on the roads, uh, you see a pothole, you see a debris, uh, you want to actually uh, let the city uh, know about it. Uh, all you need to do is just take a picture of the debris. Uh, it has a location uh, uh, identity on it where it can give you all the geo-coordinate information. It uploads it back to the city. City gets a ticket to actually work on it. Uh, think about it. Uh, there are sensors on the garbage uh, bins. Uh, the waste management takes about a certain set of uh, uh, services per day. Either the garbage is full or not full. So there might be some efforts where there's no garbage, but the train comes and picks up, or there might be garbage overflowing, and there are no garbage vans coming over there, right? So there are sensors which can actually tell when it, when it reaches the threshold or when it reaches the 80% level, and then you have the uh, app taken care of uh, picking up the garbage. So you can come up with various uh, use cases. Uh, all the use cases, if you want to try out, uh, we have some uh, physical discrete sensors which is uh, shown outside this DevNet zone. Uh, you can work on this and uh, try out. So um, from the uh, API perspective, um, uh, what we have is uh, we provide you early access. We provide you interoperability. So you can work on any platform. Uh, basically, we have uh, provided an accelerated adoption of uh, the IoT uh, uh, solutions. Uh, you can actually try out your uh, API, uh, start from day one here, and then uh, start building certain key uh, applications. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how you can get onboarded. So uh, we have uh, our API deployment on the developer.cisco.com. Um, and then you can actually um, download uh, the APIs and also start working on uh, uh, reviewing our reference apps. Uh, there is a simulator I can bring in uh, where it can actually give you various levels of uh, simulations on a parking lot. So uh, let me bring up the parking lot. So if you walk through, uh, uh, here are the uh, quick six steps uh, for you to have the API development. Uh, you can have uh, a quick access. Uh, what we're giving you is you don't need to do anything other than your email ID. Uh, we give you access to the tools. Uh, and then we actually get you started with the API references. Uh, there are uh, hello world, uh, so the time to hello world can be less than an hour. Um, uh, we have various sandboxes. Uh, these sandboxes gives you a real lifetime, uh, uh, you know, cloud uh, deployed uh, instances of all the sensors. Uh, you can pick uh, smart city sensors, and then you can actually run these uh, as uh, as a you know own environment. And then um, there's a simulator I would like to show you. And then you get connected. So we have some community forums and pages. Uh, provide your inputs. Uh, we would be uh, glad to answer you most of the questions. Okay. So with that, um, I am coming to the close. If you would uh, like to know, uh, I'm, we are ready to uh, have you a one-on-one -on -one conversation after this meeting. Um, any information, you can find it on the Cisco websites. So with that, I'll open up for any questions so that may have.
Okay, thank you everyone. If you don't have any questions.